10% of men get 90% of the women. And if that's not fucking crazy to you, it bloody should. It's not all lost and I want to throw a lifeline to you. I want to tell you about something that I think it's quite appropriate for this situation, which is the attractiveness of men and women and when it peaks. And unfortunately, for women, it goes like this as they age. And for men, it goes like this because women are usually most attractive when they're young. And there are some biological reasons for that, which is they're fertile and men see that they don't think about it consciously, but they, they feel it in their biological sense. So they know that that woman is fertile, so they feel attracted to them. And men, as they get older, they acquire resources and that becomes attractive to those young women. So if you're a young guy, particularly, you know, between 17 and your early 20s, and let's say you haven't had much luck with girls, it's not all lost because what you should be doing is working on yourself. These years that you're young, that you have a lot of energy and that you have a lot of time, what you should do instead of focusing on trying to get girls, you should focus on trying to work on yourself. I don't buy this black pill bullshit of like, the only reason you get girls is because of your looks and Chad is gonna get Stacy and all that rubbish. I don't believe that because although it's true that looks have a big part on mating. I don't think it's the full picture because let's say, while you can't change the shape of your nose, you're just born with that. There is some things you can definitely change about your appearance. And first of all is how athletic you are. That's something that you can just work on and get better at tomorrow. You can start doing some push-ups, some pull-ups, some squats. And if you do that for a year, your physique will improve dramatically. And I always like the example of, let's say there is a very good looking guy, but he doesn't take care of himself very much. So he's not athletic, he's not well groomed, he doesn't ha have a good haircut. But then you have this other guy who maybe it's not as good looking as the other one, but he's perfectly groomed. He has a haircut that suits his face shape. Um, he's athletic. We're even men, we're gonna be more attracted to have him as a friend and women are gonna be attracted to that guy who's not maybe as good looking, but has maximized his potential. And that's why I said that I don't believe this black pill bullshit because yes, looks get the girls, but you can always maximize your looks much more than what you're doing right now. And if you haven't done that, then you cannot complain and you cannot blame the girls that, oh, they just want to chat. And it's just not fair to the girls because have you, first of all, tried to maximize that? And once you do that, I guarantee you 100% that your luck with girls will, will change dramatically. The other thing that I don't agree with, with this black pill bullshit is that they say that the times has, have changed so much that women now don't want men around. And while there's some truth in that, I don't think it's the full picture. While times have changed, yes, of course, 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago, a woman needed a man to provide to the family. It's not like that today. So a woman doesn't need a man to provide for the family. And 70 years ago, a man's salary, an average job for an average man would be more than sufficient to maintain an average family. That's not the case today. And if you have, let's say, a family of two children, three children, and only the man works, well, he must be a lawyer or an astrophysicist. I don't know, because no average job is gonna let a man take care of his family. But that doesn't mean that women don't need men, or that doesn't mean that you can put all the blame on women, because I agree 100% that women should work and that women should have the same opportunities as men. Maybe before a woman would settle with, let's say, a more average man and just be content with what she has with him. And today they won't settle for anything less than what they think is perfect or what they think they deserve. And that's a topic for another video, but 
going back to the improving yourself. If you try to improve yourself as much as possible, if you're a masculine man that is athletic, that has a good haircut, smells good, wears perfume, and you maximize all those things, you almost become necessary to a woman because there's not many guys like that. So even though it might seem like women don't need men, I think that we're an essential part of each other's life. Men need women and women need men. So that notion that women don't need men, well, they don't need men to support them now, but they do need men as, let's say, spiritual companions on this journey of life that we have. Going back to the title of the video, 10% of men get 90% of the women. I think that says more about the other 90% of men than it does say about women. Because what that's telling you, in my opinion, and I might be wrong, is that the women believe that that 10% of men is worth their time, is worth having a relationship with, is worth even sharing with other women, which I don't agree that men should do that. What you should try to do instead of criticizing women or criticizing that 10% of men is do as much as you can to do the things that those men do. So probably they have money, they have resources, they have appearances, whatever they might have that you can achieve, you should try to maximize that. Obviously not everybody can become a millionaire and that's the next point that we're gonna talk about and it's money. It's evident that women are attracted to resources, which makes perfect sense to me. If you're a woman and you wanna have children and you want those children to be well looked after, it makes perfect sense that you want a man who has resources to take care of those children. It makes perfect sense. Men acquire resources as they age. So if you're a young guy, again, 17, early 20s, and you don't have the resources you think you should, instead of chasing girls, what you should do is working on yourself and try to develop the skills necessary to acquire those resources over time. So you might have those resources when you're 35, 40, 45. So at least I think this video is kind of more hopeful of the future if you're young, like everything will be better as you age and you should trust that. And then one of the last reasons why I think this happens, and you're gonna think that it's crazy, but bear with me, is that you don't put yourself out there as much as you actually would have to, to get the girl, let's say. And I've seen this video the other day in the podcast in Modern Wisdom, and they were talking about something like along these lines, and it was so fascinating what I heard. Is you gotta put yourself out there way more. Uh, so they've done these studies on like what happens when people of different attractiveness or desirability ratings message someone else on, on an online dating site. So like what happens when a one messages 10 on an online dating site? And before I saw the data, I'm like, this is a bloodbath. This is like a one asking out of 10. I mean, or messaging 10, we're talking about like a one in a million, a one in a billion, like, come on, like that, that's not gonna happen. And the data says for a heterosexual man, one asking out a heterosexual 10, it's like 14%. And for a heterosexual woman asking out a one, ask, going after a heterosexual man, it's like 30%. So like when you actually do the math, the key to getting, like, if you if you want to date out of your league, which I don't necessarily recommend, because I also have in a section how physical conventional attraction is the most overvalued thing in the in the dating market. But let's be honest, everybody's trying to like everybody is curious how can I date someone who's way more beautiful or way more desirable than me? And I think it's a combination of being an extreme version of yourself and then asking tons of people out. Uh, because like if you have a 14% chance on one go, then you actually do the math. If you ask like 30 people out, you have like a 98% chance. So like, all you gotta do is just keep on going after it. And a lot of people are gonna be like, no, 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 no. And eventually uh, you're gonna get your, your yes. So you're just not putting yourself out there as much as you should, because of course, like fear of rejection, we all have fear of rejection. 
But if you never put yourself in the situation where you might speak to new girls or you're always stuck at home playing video games or online and you never actually put yourself in the chance that those interaction with women might happen and you will get rejected, you will get rejected a lot. Knowing how to deal with that rejection and knowing that that's part of life, that that will happen again, again and again. And it will not happen only with girls. It will happen in your career, the jobs you apply to, when you try to start a business, it will fail and fail and fail. So that is a constant throughout life. And the sooner you figure that out and the sooner you start putting yourself out there and trying and not be discouraged because you can't do it the first time or even the first 20 times, in the end, it will happen. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And like always, see you in the next one.